In today's show, we'll answer the question, what made you name it Galatea Meridian? So Lutherville was named Lutherville for a specific reason. And I wanted to name the land one thing and name the project of the house something else. Galatea Meridian was a name that I came to after a while of contemplating some other names. One of the first names that I was looking at was uh, Wustenhaus, which hmm. is German for desert house. And are you German? I'm mostly German, gotcha. so I thought I would use a name like that. Another one that I thought might be kind of cool would be another German name, which was Elfenbeintrum. That hmm. means ivory tower. Now I intend for Galatea Meridian to be a nice stark kind of white, and one of the things that inspired me to become a novelist was the never-ending story. Ah, uh, that's a good one. I always cried though when the horse got sucked in the quicksand. Yes, yes, our tax getting sucked into the swamps of sadness was a very sad scene. Yes. But the childlike empress lived in the ivory tower, mm -hmm. so I thought it would be cool to name it after that. And a lot of people don't know this, but the never-ending story is originally written in German. The hmm. author is Michael Enda, and he's a German author, and it was originally written in German. So, Elfenbeintrum would be very appropriate because if you actually read Never Ending Story in German, that's what the Ivory Tower was called. So why didn't you go with that one? Well, I was afraid that nobody would be able to pronounce it. <laughs> For one thing, nobody would know what the heck it was. So, didn't go with that. It's a good reason. Yeah. Now, Galatea Meridian is inspired from Greek mythology. Galatea being the wife of Pygmalion. Hmm. So the story goes like this. Pygmalion was a sculptor, and he sculpted a statue of an ivory girl. And one night, he was out taking a walk and came across a house of ill repute. Ooh. Yes, and he was really upset that there were all these lascivious sort of people and people that he just didn't really want to associate with. Mm -hmm. And he went home feeling all lonely and bummed out. Why couldn't he find a decent girl? And so he said a prayer to Aphrodite. Who, by the way, Aphrodite was actually the one who turned all those women into prostitutes. But that's really, the huh? Because they were comparing their beauty to Aphrodite. Oh, so it's punishment. Yeah, I you, see. Don't, you don't do that to a goddess. It's a no-no. Yeah. So she wasn't too happy about that. So he came home, Pygmalion comes home, says the prayer to Aphrodite, and she is so moved by this that she decides to make his statue of the ivory girl into a real person. Hmm. Which is a lot like a lot of other stories and a lot of other legends. Such as? Such as? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Pinocchio, a real boy, obviously, not a real woman. Right. But the same concept that Geppetto is feeling sad and lonely. So he prays that he can have a real boy and the blue fairy comes along and makes Pinocchio real. Just like Aphrodite made the ivory girl real. And so you've had this dream of a dream home and now you are making it a reality? Is that the, the mapping there? That's one of the analogies, yeah. Fantastic. Now, phonetically, the word Galatea also resembles Gattaca, which is one of my favorite science fiction films about the human spirit triumphing over a harsh environment. In the case of the movie, the harsh environment consists of societal prejudices, and in my case, the harsh environment is a desert. But, you know, the correlation still be fitting. But there are even more reasons to use the name Galatea. I mean, yeah. not only is it a great metaphor from mythology, but it has psychological implications as well. Mm -hmm. There's a precept in psychology known as the Pygmalion effect, yeah. whereby the greater the expectation placed upon people, the better they behave. The idea that workers and students will be lazy slackers if you treat them like bums, <laughs> and right. they'll excel and be exemplary performers if you have faith that they will be spectacular. Yeah. In addition to the Pygmalion effect, there's also a phenomenon in psychology known as the Galatea effect, which is the notion that if you believe you will attain success, then you shall achieve it. The power of positive thinking. <laughs> Again, these psychological relationships between self-fulfilling prophecies and tenacity and fortitude all seemed ideal to reflect one of Eric's most ambitious and daunting creations. And, and what about Meridian? Meridian 
is because a lot of homes will be called the estate or house or whatever, right? You'll call it Galatea House or Galatea Estate. And I didn't like any of those names because they're used all the time. Mm -hmm. However, I figured a meridian, that's sort of a good synonym for a lot of those things. A meridian is always a location somewhere on the earth. Therefore, every house has a meridian. I just thought that sounded good. Galatea Meridian, as opposed to Galatea Estate. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's fancier too. Mm -hmm. Got them fancy names. <laughs> You're so fancy. Oh my God. You already know Galatea Meridian. Come on over to his home. Lutherville is an educational series inspiring kids and adults to become excited about innovations in science and technology by documenting the design and construction of a Mojave Desert homestead called Galatea Meridian. Witness the crazy story of how Eric Muss Barnes, an unemployed computer geek and struggling novelist, risks homelessness by spending most of his life savings to build an off-grid dream house in the middle of nowhere. Having purchased vast acres of the Old West, can Eric find a stable job and create his home before his money runs out? Take a journey where fortitude and a pioneering spirit continue to forge the American dream on the romantic landscape of the American frontier. Thank you for watching this episode of Lutherville. Please make sure to share the video with your friends and family. And remember, if your ambitions don't scare you, then they're not big enough.